Welcome to Soul Rising. We're your hosts, Amy and Erin. We're two everyday mediums who are passionate about taking the woo-woo out of spirituality and bringing it down to earth. So put the kettle on, grab a chair, and join oh. us. Hello, everyone. Hello. How is everybody doing today? Episode um, seven. It's what? what did it's you episode say? seven. Episode seven. That's, oh my god, that's right. We are What's nearing it? up to. Let's. Okay. Should we talk about quickly episode ten and an idea we had maybe for episode ten? Yeah, we're just gonna yeah, take yeah, us. Yeah. We're yes. just gonna take yeah. us into the new year. What they think of it, not the idea. Yeah, so we kind of were toying with this idea. You guys can let us know with your feedback if it's something you, you would be interested in. Um, in the new year, that we would um, come together and do a podcast episode here, but with one of you as our guests to be read. <laughs> Um, to receive a reading from us, um, from one of us or both of us. Um, so yeah, comes through, comes, yeah, yeah. So if that's something you'd be interested in, please let us know. We'll be putting some sort of information about it over the Christmas holiday. Um, I think it's going to be kind of like a, I don't know, like a contest in a way where Aaron and I are going to talk it talk about it more thoroughly, so that there's a way for you know you your vote. Um, to be counted and all that kind of stuff and then we will pull it sometime in the new year right before you know i, I want to give at least like a week um yeah. yeah notice for you to come on and just that you'd know that it would be recorded and shared um with the general population and we don't have to we'll keep your privacy obviously like name and stuff like that but um yeah, yeah. does that, that yeah, sound good we want to celebrate yeah. almost 10 episodes that's wild Just the beginning so this has been what over is that this is over a month now yeah well, ah! i've been pulling cards as i'm talking because um so we've been starting out it seems that people like it i'm pulling a card at the beginning and aaron's pulling a card at the end so we're just kind of giving a weekly little bit of guidance so far it seems like mostly it's a monthly guidance for us it feels like yeah. it's bigger than just this week um so I'm just going to, this is another new card. Last episode, we pulled a brand new card from a brand new deck here. Um, and so this new deck is called Gateway of Life, Light Activation Oracle. It's by Kyle Gray. It's a brand new one. Um, Aaron and I both happened to buy it, which is funny, um, without yeah. knowing that the other one had bought it. Um, and so the card that comes up is Star Being Healing Codes. Wow. So those of you on YouTube can see this picture. It's, it looks like this angelic kind of being, light being, and he's that's, holding. Yeah. You, sorry. Keep talking. No, that's okay. He's holding, um, you know, a ball of light. His hands are kind of holding them. It's, so we see the earth in the middle, and it's like it's being suspended, and he is sending, um, he's sending light to to the earth to us here on earth um so this says important information coming through wounds are healed and recharging exactly what we need um this message about recharging especially over the holidays um coming back again to this important message we've been channeling all month about being in your body and being present this is how we recharge um when we're busy busy bees and we're not in our body and we're not taking time to listen to our own inner knowing we're kind of very disconnected, right? So we wouldn't, yeah. we wouldn't maybe even being be aware of what needs healing or needs work um, because we're kind of on autopilot. So slow down, slow yeah. down, allow this important information to come through for you because it has the potential to heal old wounds as well as recharge your energy. Mm -hmm. um, so just really quickly, the message says, if the world seems overwhelming or intense at this time, we've been talking about this for weeks, know that it's okay for you to retreat to a safe space to recharge to cleanse and recharge your energy. Exactly what we've been telling you. You may feel called to be a healer for others and share healing with the world, but please ensure you are balanced and filled with the light first. This is a message for Aaron and I, I think. Um, this is not the time for you to sacrifice your own well-being in order to serve others. 
Light beings are placing their hands upon you now, filling you with divine light that will wash away any blockages or stagnant energy that's standing in the way of your freedom and wholeness. More of this, please. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I felt that one. We're feeling it. That's a message for us all. all for nice. us all. Givers, helpers of the world, yeah. um, parents, you know, guardians, people that yeah. take care of people, nursing, medical staff, whoever you are, whatever you do in which you're helping others, make sure you take time for yourself this holiday mm -hmm. season. Give yourself the gift of recharging. The Only world's, give when your cup is overflowing. The world's not going to stop spinning because yeah. you slept in or you took a day for yourself. Okay? Yeah. It's very important. I get goosebumps as I'm saying it. The world will not stop. Just because, yeah. Yeah. You because you need a time out. Excited. It's kind of like what I'm seeing is like somebody going, okay, I, I'm I'm tapping out. Okay, I'm tapping you in. You know, it's kind of like we're all, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing. It's like we're all um, connected. It's like, okay, I, I'm going to pass this to you. Like, this is for you today. I'm tapping out. I need the day off. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's the image I'm getting. So. That's so true. So true. That, like improv. I don't know if you've ever, people have ever put, played improv. There's that. They're, uh, they're tapping and out. out. Right? And yeah. It's just funny because, I mean, all the world is the stage. As they right. Say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so from this play for a sec. Yeah. This is another um, example of how the cards don't lie. Right. And the cards are an ex external e extension of your own inner knowing. Um, so when you pull a card, it doesn't matter if you're just starting to car pull cards or if you're somebody that does this all the time. Um, it doesn't matter. The card that comes out is the card that's meant to be heard. So, yeah, it's just there's no there's no coincidences here that the messages that we've been pulling over the last couple of weeks all are saying the same thing. Yeah. From different decks. We, I've been purposely choosing different decks, as I think you are as well. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe not consciously, purposely choosing, but for some reason we are. And I've, I've been noticing that too, yeah. Yeah, and it's probably um, just because, I don't know, we're showcasing how this works, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Different, different card decks. <laughs> for people yeah. that might be interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. That's that's crazy. That's so, a good kind of like lead into what we wanted to talk about, which was um, like past lives, reincarnation. And, uh, yeah. And it's funny because so I've been wanting to tell this quick little story for the last two episodes. And then it's like kept being put off um, because we've run out of time. And so we decided to talk about it first today. But it actually... There is a self-care message in that, which is interesting. It's um, kind of interesting to me now because we're talking about, you know, taking that time out and recharging. And so this is the story. Um, so a couple years ago, I want to say maybe um, beginning of 2019, like that spring, um, a friend of mine invited me to go, uh, her and another friend, to go to the spa. So I am not one to like go do that stuff very often. Like I literally have, ne I think I've had one pedicure and one manicure in my whole life. Like I'm not um, somebody that regularly goes for whatever right. reason. Um, right. And I'm not somebody that like regularly goes and gets massages or anything like that. Um, and she invited me to go. So I was like, sure. And I went um, and it was for a massage as well as a manicure. And so I hadn't had a massage in like probably 15 years before this, like my poor, my poor body. Um, anyway, so we go and we're all like in different rooms. We had the massage. First of all, I found it extremely synchronistic. We we're talking last week about synchronicities. The, <laughs> the person, it was a girl um, who did my massage. Her first name was August. My son's name is August. It's not a very common name. Okay. So first of all, I was like, okay, that's weird. Like I happen to get the one person here named August. Like I've never met another August in my life. Um, so there was that. Uh, and then, so we're doing the massage. It was an hour long. And the whole time I'm like, at, with each movement, with each thing she did in my mind's eye, it was like, I was seeing really almost like neon 
cut really, really um, saturated colors um, and like geometric shapes that were like constantly moving and turning. So I'd see like a triangle and then it would like turn into like uh, like a cylinder and then it turned into a square. It was like constantly moving for the whole hour. OK, and so I was relaxed, but I was still like I certainly didn't fall asleep or anything. I was, like, I was like, like oh. I was like, okay, like this is kind of weird. So then it was, it was done, and we went out into like the waiting area um, when we were waiting t- to get our nails done. And I said to them, "So do you guys like what happens when you have a massage?" Like I was trying to, I was wondering if this is something that other people experience. You guys also and, see like shapes and colors, and they were that... like, "What?" And and I said, "So that doesn't happen." They're like, "No, like." Th- I think both of them had fallen asleep and I'm like oh okay like <laughs> weird because in the past I'd also had like way back when I had had a um, reflexology appointment yeah. um, which is all like all on your feet and I had similar kind of experience then as well um, whereas like because it's like the it's like specific parts of your feet are connected to parts of your body and like as she was working on a certain area it would like I, certain things felt better than other places or like more energy in. And those when she told me afterwards where they corresponded, it was to parts of my body that like were bothering me at that time. So I found that kind of interesting, too. But yeah. um, I was just like, OK, OK, that's interesting. And they kind of like laughed like, OK, Amy, like, OK. Um, oh, and I, did, okay, thank I didn't say anything else about it. And then fast forward, maybe like two or three months I happened to be, I don't even know how I read it because it was a newspaper article from a city like that I'm not in or not even close to. And it was this article about this guy in his late 20s, I feel, who had like a work related accident, something physical. I can't remember what his actual work was um, in which he like passed away at work. Like he literally died. Um, And the they, you know, they did. CPR and all that stuff ended up bringing him back. Um, So I don't know how much time had gone by, but he was okay. Uh, And he was in hospital and he shared this experience, which then they wrote about in this article. And it was about his near death experience and how, what it looked like where he was when his, when he was not alive, when his heart wasn't beating and it was dark with bright, geometric shapes that appeared to be kind of like constantly changing and evolving like shape shifting and he felt weightless and warm and very safe and he actually almost felt like um he was being pulled away from it as you know they were bringing him back and he was like I almost don't want to go because this feels so amazing and so reading that it already was a strange coincidence that I even read it or found that article because like I said it wasn't from my where I lived so I was like hmm that's weird so I started to think about it more and I'm like maybe what I'm seeing is actually visually a representation of energy and so I think I put it like way back when around that time it was when I first kind of started to do readings um I wasn't as active as I am now on social media but I think I put it out there and asked people and there were other people that responded and said they also had similar experiences where they saw energy in their mind's eye and it looked the same yeah so that's interesting so have you ever Uh, experienced anything like that yeah yeah I don't think I've ever told you this. No, because I don't think I know this about you. (laughs) Maybe it just needed to come out now. But I remember this was like years ago um, when I was living by myself. And I would go to this park. It's like near my house. And I'd always go read a book. Or it was just a good place to like ground. Yeah. Right? Disconnect. And um, I remember getting this like download of uh, that what we see right now exists in spirit exists in another dimension but it's brighter and it's more colorful so we it's dulled down for us this is dulled down significantly do you think it's because of the vibration glimpse of i was looking at this tree (coughs) yeah i saw the it was like the, the brightest green the brightest green do you think it has to do with like vibration and frequency and things? Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's all. It's all connected. 
Yeah, it's all connected energy, right? So this, this reminds like, me again, this is kind of another synchronicity, but it also ties into what we're talking about. So I've got this thing on the wall I'm going to share with you. Yeah. Um, and I might have talked about it before, but I don't think on the podcast I have. I don't think so. The first time that I ever sat down and like purposely channeled spirit. Like, cause remember before I talked about, I didn't know it was a two way street. I thought I had to wait around. The first time I sat down and I was like, this is my intention of what I'm yeah. doing. Ugh. One of the things that came through was this. Why do you want to live in black and white when you can live in techno color? And as I say it, I almost get choked up. Like I want to cry. Um, so it's like, I literally had it printed on this beautiful, like gold embossed thing to remind me like, why do I want to live in the status quo in black and white when I have access to this, <laughs> to the color of the world, like the technicolor, right? Even that word technicolor, that's what that means. Yeah. It's bright. They say, right? Like they say that we can only, like, we only see so much with our brains and we only see so much with our eyes. If we saw everything that was going on, we would we couldn't I function. We I don't think we could function. function. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that. And I also believe that's why um, not everybody maybe feels they can do what we do. Like, I feel yeah. like there's a level of like um, consciousness that needs to be had anyways, um, which yeah. I think past ties into past lives, first of all. Um, and, you know, because if you, if you were just like, just imagine how overwhelming that would be. If you just woke up one day and you're like, oh, my God, like, I, I can see spirit, I can talk to them. I, and if some people have experienced this since childhood. Um, like, I know you were pretty young. It's It can yeah. be very overwhelming. It's it's overwhelming. It's, it's, it's because everything, it literally, oh, like, I and I know, I know how it sounds. I know how it sounds. It's hard for uh, people who haven't experienced it to, right, to yeah. really wrap your yeah. head around it. But that's I'm everything. Yeah. yeah. Hearing voices. Yeah. Hear, not all the time, but at weird times. I'd be going to the bathroom. <laughs> Hearing voices, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, and you can't really make out what people are saying. Mm -hmm. I was like seeing things move, seeing my plate move. Mm -hmm. a glass I was pouring myself I think a coke or something I don't know but I was pouring it and it moved I have a question do you think that it's you that's moving that <laughs> are you going to talk about that is it your energy or is it because okay, so uh, yeah I think the first time it happened was my grandfather hands down to show you that you could maybe like maybe he was using my energy and coming through because I I just, I just felt like it was him. It felt, because I... That's that who, inner knowing. Where does this come from, right? Yeah. When I'm younger and I'm like, Grandpa? Like, right at the end. Yeah. Like, when it happened, I was like, Grandpa, can you do it again? Yeah. Come on, come on. <laughs> of yeah. course, it didn't happen again, right? But I, it could be, right? Showing that I could do that. And then it moved. Like, I just... I don't have words to explain it. I remember trying to, like, recreate it, trying to, like, see if I could slide it. Like, just, like by hitting it or like moving the, um, I was trying to debunk it was what I was doing when I was young. Yeah. Well, of course. I think most of us try to do that. I think even we sometimes are like, no, you know, just, and then it then happens again. Last, you're like, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't trust you the first time. Um, that's human nature. Like that's yeah. completely, I think that's the point of being human. Yeah. Well, in, in a way, this speaking of when I was younger, it ties into past lives, mm -hmm. into reincarnation. And I, maybe I said this on the podcast. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, guys. Um, I remember, and I feel really guilty for saying it because I said this to my mom who, like, loves me and we love each other. But <coughs> excuse I was me. really mad at her one day. I was yeah. probably 12. I don't know, mm -hmm. 13, like 12. Okay, I was, I was young. I was little. And she was, you know, just like, you have to, I don't know what I did. I don't really remember. All I remember is that I said to her, I don't want to be here anymore. I was like, I want to go back home. Mm -hmm. I want to go home. And I don't know where that came from. But as a kid, I was like, this isn't it. <laughs> 
why am I feeling this, this this way? Like I shouldn't be, you know, frustrated or angry. I don't know what's happening. you remembered I before. I want to go back home. Mm-hmm. And my mom's like, <laughs> this is home. <laughs> this yeah. is your home. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I felt so, I, I always think about that because one, I feel awful for saying it, even though I talked about it with my mom and she's like, please, I mean, you were young, yeah. right? Like, and, and it helps that she's open to this already. And so, right. She just sort of knows that that's, that's what that was. And I mm-hmm. think that's, I, and you talk here about people talking about past lives or talking about this other place yep. and it feels like it is home. Yep, I've had that experience. Absolutely. And it's funny you're saying this because about, I don't know, like in the last couple of days. So it's like from the last time we recorded till now, um, my youngest said to me, just like randomly in passing, said to me um, something about his other mother, his other mom. And I was like, pardon? <laughs> Tell me more, right? But he, yeah. he like didn't give me a lot, but he was just like, uh, some, he was just talking about his other mom. And that his other mom was very different than me. And I'm like, okay. Um, you know, and I'm just like, I, I don't discredit it. I am sure he's remembering something from his past. And so that's why I'm like trying to nurture like, okay, well, like, tell me more about it rather than to discredit it or, you know, go, yeah, like, let's Brush talk about that stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. The and, thing, he, I and I didn't push it either because he didn't, once he was like, he just said, well, I, I just remember that she was different than you and she looked different than you. And I was like, okay. And that's really all he had to say about it. So I, I just yeah. let it go. But it's interesting because he literally just said that. But he's also the kid that, so my two sons, so I have a, a daughter and two sons. And the two boys especially um, are very like energy sensitive. I actually think my daughter is as well, but she internalizes it more. And so she doesn't speak about it more. I also think she's a lot like me in the sense that because growing up, I didn't realize that not everybody experienced what I did. Okay. So that's why I didn't talk about it, because I thought it was normal. And I think there's a, a there's a, a level of her perhaps feeling the same. Um, yeah. But yeah, like my youngest um, has been saying stuff since he was really young. Like my dad passed away when my youngest was... Um, just before his second birthday and he had only met my dad once because we didn't live like in the same place in the same province and he would randomly say things about my dad like especially in that year after he passed like um I was just downstairs playing and Poppy came out of the laundry room so apparently Poppy is what we called him um and he he's he said it like three or four times sporadically over the last like five or six years that Poppy comes from the back room, the laundry room, and comes out and looks at him when he's playing. And I'm like, okay. Like, he was saying this when he was, like, two. And I'm like, yeah. huh. And yeah. then once he said to me, like, this, it was it was not a windy day. This is one of those, like, whoo, stories. It was not a windy day at all. And we have a mm-hmm. swing in the backyard. And it was swinging. <laughs> it was swinging. And, and I was just like. And I didn't, I noticed it, but then I didn't say anything. And then it was almost like I didn't, um, like consciously note, like didn't like actually notice it, but I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And then he said, um, mommy, I want to go out and play with her. Mm-hmm. And I said, who? And he said, the little girl on the swing. And I was like, I am going to lose it. Cause I don't know what is happening right now, but yeah, like stuff like that's happened. But, and I feel wow. like that's not uncommon. I feel like a lot of parents will experience this with their kids because kids yeah. <laughs> are sensitive to spirit and they remember. And I also feel like purposely a lot of kids are being born right now that are sensitive to spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to work at a daycare. Okay. And um, was I with her? I can't remember. My friend, uh, worked. we worked together. And um, she was telling me this story where she uh, was talking to one of the kids there who's like just... I mean, they're all really sweet. This, kid, like, just you know, one of them, the those children that I think you you work with that always you're just always going to remember. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I think he was all. They were also really sensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and said to her one day, "Who's that man beside you?" And <laughs> my friend was like, "There's no, there's no man beside me." Who? And just looked. Matter of fact. <laughs> And then went, yeah. 
And so, and I think this, they must have been, this child was three, four, mm-hmm. three or four. Yeah. 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 I believe it. And I, I mean, she knows that I, obviously that if I do this work and we've talked about it and she was like, do you think I'm right about who I think? Like she thought it was her grandfather. Mm-hmm. And I said, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Who do you think it is? I mean, that's... that's that tells you who it is. Who do you think it yeah. is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's amazing. I, I love stories like this. And it's I, I love Facebook for the reason it's like a vault of memories. So like every time I um, oh, okay. I get my Facebook memories, especially with my middle child, because um, I had Facebook like before he was born, which is crazy because he's now a teenager. And I look <laughs> back at the, the memories that come up and, and just like the things that that child would say, like a memory came up maybe a month ago or something. And because and, I used to share snippets like, um, you know, like it would be like what he says and then what I say back. And that would be my post. Yeah. And he said to me, mommy, you have a very high frequency. And it's why I just love being around you so much. Oh, and I mean, God. he was like five and this was say years, that word, frequency, frequency. And this was years before I realized I was a medium years, but also that I thought enough of it to post it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's also interesting. And he also was the, he also was a child who like, so when I was expecting my youngest, mm-hmm. um, I think I told this, this, this story before, but like with the, my first two children, I knew like immediately that I was expecting them. I knew what their, um, that like if they were going to be a boy or a girl, like all of these things I knew from like right away. Um, yeah. so I actually didn't like need confirmation because I already knew it in my bones, but with okay. him, I didn't want to know. I wanted like the one surprise and it, it so, so I'd like, didn't get anything <laughs> really throughout the whole pregnancy. And he, wow. my son though, the, the middle one that I was just talking about swore like from the very beginning that he, we were going to have a boy. And then he said, I really would like to have a sister another sister because I want to be the only boy, but I know that I'm not going to have another sister. I know I'm having a boy. Um, Speaking of boy, you can have them. Speaking of boy, he's, there he is. Um, (laughs) Right on call, right on cue. Um, Yeah. So yeah, there's something to that too. Like children being extra, you know, sensitive to spirit and psychic and all of those things. And I think that if we, kind of just ask questions about it i think that we can help yes. nurture mm-hmm. listen that's just like, listen that's, really that's all you have to do you can do right just because i feel like sometimes if you if you discredit something right or if you like push it down um but then there's like there's a lot of then there's that other so extra stuff that I feel like <laughs> has to kind of you and I only say this from my own you know experience not necessarily that my parents did this but if you like you know just being told no or by other people or that's not true or what are you talking about that's you know silly and that's a lot of stuff that I feel like sometimes you work through as you get older which is it affects, it can affect a lot because if that's your reality and that's what you're experiencing and other people are telling you that it doesn't exist, then there's a level of like deep down, like as a child, which is where we build our foundation for our, our yeah. whole personality. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a level of distrust in yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people that I work with now, um, when I connect to them, especially if it's like intuitive guidance or past life reading, things like that will come up. Like there's this history of distrust in yourself mm-hmm. in what I experience. I can't trust it to be true. Yeah. Um, and this, I think this is a huge block in people trusting their intuition. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. if you're, if you're told that what you feel is wrong, then you're going to turn that off. And even when it's screaming at you, you're going to go I can't trust you. I can't, I can't explain it. Therefore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there are so many things in this world that cannot be explained. And if you think I read something the other day, somebody said something like, isn't science 
Like science is, mm. science has a, like plays catch up. It's like science eventually can prove things that at one point, yeah, it's true. Nobody <laughs> believed in. So yeah. science is like playing catch up. So at some point, the things that say we're experiencing, science will prove it. I yeah. know it, I get goosebumps all up and down my body as I say that. And it's it's that true. We're like the the Wright brothers, right? Like we're gonna fly. And everybody was like, no, you can't no. because it hasn't been done before. The world yeah. is flat. Then everybody took it as truth until yeah. somebody proved it wasn't. And so I feel like it's okay. Like there's a lot of things that science hasn't caught up yet. So we can't just rely all the time on our logic. Um, mm -hmm. It will one day, I feel, I feel like one day this is going to be very norm. Like the they kind norm. of balance each other, right? Yeah. Science, spirituality. I feel again, we're just talking about I you feel know, like love they're, and they're fear. connected. Yeah. Not that like it's the exact same, but there's always these op there's always things that I feel not necessarily that like science is the complete opposite of spirituality, if that makes sense, but that it really I think it balances the balance the two out. It's almost like sp things like spirituality, intuition are like they just are. So I feel like they're say if we were categorizing them, like if we were breaking it down through love and through this lens of love and fear, spirituality is, you know, love. So it, it just is. It just it just is science. Maybe if we thought about it from that lens could be initially from the lens of fear of like, I don't know what this is. So I am going to because I'm not certain I'm going to try to prove it. Yeah. yeah. And then once it's proven, it goes over in the love category. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we all say, trust the science. Trust the science. Trust yeah. the science. It's just because somebody has like been able to like, I keep hearing the word quantify. Is that the right word? They've quantified. Ah, uh, oh, like where's that coming from? They've quantified <laughs> the unknown into the known. Yeah. Love it. I love I it love too. So um, reincarnation, near death. Let's keep reincarnation going. Reincarnation, near death. I was like, what are we, what are we doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know. Yeah. You're good. You got it. I've it been reading lots been of books about reincarnation. Back. I just finished this one yesterday. It's called yes. You Were Born Again to Be Together. Who's it by? Who's the author? Dick Sutphin. Uh, nice. Sutphin is S-U-T-P-H-E-N. Um fascinating true stories of reincarnation that prove that love is immortal so um, essentially he was a hypnotist um who so he got into spirituality i want to say like in his 30s he was doing something totally oh he's an artist before that's right and um he got into hypnosis and um the more he would do the more um evidence would come up that people constantly reincarnated to reincarnated together groups of people like tribes of people your soul uh, family um as well as but this this is a lot of focus on the um, romantic relationship side so yeah. about choosing to be born over and over and over again with your loved one and how sometimes um sometimes it's to balance like there's a lot of talk about karma in here and i really love he validates my feelings around karma, which is that it's not necessarily a punishment, but more of like a cycle behavior, a pattern, yeah. right? Yeah. And so there, sometimes it's just like the balancing of the karma is simply in becoming aware of the yeah. pattern and ending it, like choosing something different. Oh, um, yeah. But he showed how sometimes like in lives, um, you know, like they didn't all, it didn't always work out in each life. Because they were teaching each other something through that lesson of it not working out, then coming again, trying something different. But like the even the relationships that ended in divorce or people splitting up, there still was a divine oh, reason for absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And by choosing, so from this lens of love and fear, which he talks a lot about, by choosing to see the ending of that relationship through the love lens this was this was a lesson for me right like maybe letting go and this is a hard one we know it's not something that you're just gonna get to overnight this is why we keep coming back over and over again um <laughs> but like choosing to see things um from the lens of like what did this teach me you know rather than holding on to resentment and anger yes. and all yeah. those things because as we know th those those emotions 
aren't really affecting the other person. They're just affecting us. Like that's yeah. affecting our own karma. Yeah. Like if we have a lot of hate or anger about somebody, even if we feel it's totally justified because they didn't treat us very well. Yeah. There has to be an understanding at some point, at least an encouragement that holding on to that is not hurting that other person. Yeah, That's not. Me. So when people say, oh, like karma will get them. Maybe, but you're also adding to your own, <laughs> your own, because I, right. I do, would you also say, I also believe that if you're so upset, if you, like, uh, emotions are energy. Yes. Energy. They're messengers, I think. If you are putting that out there, um, and maybe, you know what, maybe something not, not, not great happens to that person. I don't believe that's necessarily karma. <laughs> I actually feel like sometimes we put out an energy there yeah. of like, I want, I want, I'm so upset, you know, that sometimes I just, I think that that's what that is. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that you meant that in a mean way, but you were just upset, right? And that, that energy I think, I think that's what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if people say, I feel like, oh, I deserve this, like, or that's your own energy, you know, that you're putting out there and saying, I did this to myself. You, yeah. you did. You literally did do this. <laughs> I just said this yesterday. I was talking to somebody who was having an issue with somebody. And I said, <coughs> I said, I fully 100% in my bones know that when people project things on you, it's it's because it's likely because that's something that they know to be true about themselves or are worried that it's true about themselves. Yeah. Right. So somebody's it's like saying like really mean, nasty things to you. Yeah. We tend to internalize it, right? Like that's normal. We internalize it. We start to question our own self. We start to feel bad about ourselves. We lower our vibration, our energy, mm -hmm. but we allow that that's the, again, I feel like I want to say like to try to encourage people to view everything from this fear and love lens. Look at it from a different perspective. Look at it from a different perspective. Synchronicities again. Yes. I was watching um, this morning this yeah. clip from uh, of Jonah Hill on a late show. Uh, I don't know who, late Jimmy, maybe Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And he talks about, he said, I, I want to share the story about self-doubt, negative thoughts, and to not listen to that voice. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I had this great idea for this movie. And I'm bl blanking on what the movie is, but he plays a certain character for a band and it's going to come out. And he says, I didn't think this was possible. I was ta talking myself down from it. I said, I'm not going to be in this. I won't star in it. I'm not good enough. This isn't a good, a good story. It's not a good idea. And then he said, I changed that around. And I said, no, you need to share it with somebody. And I did. And he goes, and Martin Scorsese was interested in it. And here we are. Here we are. So he told that I thought that was so great. Like that it's true. It's true. It's true. We're always our own worst critics about things, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. if he had listened to that voice, created that energy of like that would have never happened. Well and I always say I always come back to this. I'm like everything that ever was, ever will be, ever is right now is because somebody thought of it and did it. But also like think of all the amazing crap <laughs> not crap but the amazing stuff that has not happened what are what? you sitting on right now go and do it what are you sitting on you watching this sitting on right now mm -hmm. i feel this in my bones i feel like we've talked about this before and that you agree if you can dream it it's possible for you if we truly believe that everything is energy and yeah. that our thoughts and feelings are powerful af then and if we look, we look, I always say, like, give yourself evidence from the past, you know, like start keeping track of things, take a mental inventory, write it down of all the things you thought you couldn't do. And you did all the things you thought you couldn't overcome. And you did. That is proof, the proof, the proof that, is in the pudding. You're right. I was just going to say that the proof that you can, even when mm -hmm. you thought you couldn't. Yes. So this is not like, this is not to say you know, like all uh, love and light and like everything's magical. Or, yeah. It's, it's about. You still like, have to put in the work. Just put in the work. Like what is the, this thing about failure? I made a, a this has been my focus lately because I'm personally like trying to work through it. My feelings around failure. And I made a reel about it. And it seemed to resonate with people about how my like um, 
teachings from the spirit world, from my own guides and my own higher self is that failure doesn't exist at a soul level. At a spirit yeah. level, there's no such thing. It's like a word that we have attached to a feeling and called it failure. Yeah. yeah. From this, from the spiritual level or from the soul level, it's more like a redirection. And like, so and it, I said, like, what, what would happen if we changed our idea of what failure means? What if we called it something different? What if we called it like, like, what if we celebrated an ending because we knew that we were like, whatever was holding us back, mm -hmm. if we trusted that if something wants to be let go, mm -hmm. it's because it's in my highest good that it's let go rather than think I failed at this. If only I had done something different. If only I did this. If only I did this. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to keep you in that space of never moving. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it makes me think of, this is a little off topic, but similar um, energy mm -hmm. of, you know, we used to celebrate death more so than we do now, you know, in, uh, I'm liking all the time frame. So, so nobody, please don't, quote me on it but Victorian times right or or um uh, you have the um the casket of the person in the room right you'd cover the mirrors right um yeah. for like we, the the widow or whoever would uh, be wearing black um as a way to mourn but also celebrate their passing well you think about even the term celebration of light life why do we call it that? It's because yeah. we're celebrating yeah. that person's life. It's like amazing yeah. for you. You you came here, you lived, you love, you saw, you experienced. I I want to cry when I say it. And like yes. now right. now you're you're free of that and you're free to do what's next for you. That's like so what's cute. next for you? Amazing. Now you you finished, you've like accomplished I graduated school. Okay. Yes, you graded? Yeah. You graduated? What's next for you? Like, it's just, I know. And that might be like an, an upper level kind of way to think. But I just feel like if we just stopped and we thought about things like that. Shifting our perspective. Imagine, like, life would be so different. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like spirituality has changed my life in the sense that I just don't fear things the way I felt any. Like, I don't fear things the same way. No. No. I still can get in a moment where like something trips me up, right? Where I'm like, oh, I don't think I can do this. But then like, then I have my, my awareness comes in and goes, the, everybody can do, you know, if the only thing that's holding me back is me. If I'm dreaming it, it means it's possible for me. If other people are telling me I can do it, it means I can do it. Like, because something I've learned in the last couple of years is being a business owner and surrounding myself with other business owners and like learning from them is that. The only difference between like people that we see as very successful mm -hmm. and maybe ourselves or where we feel we are is mm -hmm. that they did it anyways. Yeah. Like Martin Scorsese, who you mentioned, I'm sure he still has an imposter syndrome. I'm sure somebody comes in, I'm so, like for me, it's funny because recently mm -hmm. I was doing like a course and the person was like, give your imposter syndrome an identity. And yeah. so I was like, okay, the first thing that came to my mind was Michael Scott, okay, from The Office. Because I love Michael Scott, <laughs> but he, he can be a little bit of an ass, you know, like, and I was like, but I love him. So I, that's who my imposter is. And so now whenever I feel like I start to question and doubt myself, you know, that meme that's like of him and it's like, why are you the way that you are? I picture Michael Scott saying that to me. He was like, get off your ass and do the thing and stop. Like, why are you the way that you are? It's like as if I'm like, I am. Um, what's the guy he didn't like in the office? Toby. <laughs> Toby. OK, so like when I am <laughs> when my vibration is low and I'm in the depths of like fear and doubt, I am being Toby and he is like, I just hate you. Like, why are you the way that you are? Like, stop. Like, <laughs> but it helps me because it makes it funny and it takes yes. me out of my mind for a minute. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, I can, I can totally do this. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous, right? It's like, yeah, of course. Like, it, it's that scene from Harry Potter. It, what is it? The Prisoner of Azkaban. And they, there's the, 
Um, the, oh my god, people who love Harry Potter are yelling at me. Right I now. know. <laughs> The cabinet of fears or something. Oh, yeah. that's totally not the word for it. I'm sorry. But these things come out and they have to go um, ridiculous or something, right? Ridiculous. Uh, and it changes from whatever that thing was to something funny. Right. Yeah. Bring the humor into it. So I don't know, guys that are listening, and just maybe think about, please, first of all, know that imposter syndrome is very normal and something that somebody very wise has taught me recently. Imposter syndrome is actually a really good sign. What it means to have imposter syndrome is that you actually give a shit about the outcome. You actually care, right? If you, if you and I did not have imposter syndrome, we'd be like, yeah, whatever. Like I always think of myself like, like the scammers on the internet, they probably don't have imposter syndrome. That's why they're doing what they're doing, right? If you're worried about the outcome, I want to be my best for this person. I want to do my best for this person. Yeah. It's because you actually give a shit. So that's actually a good thing. So like to think about that as like your friend in a way, Mm -hmm. it changes a lot. It changes a lot. So like we're normal. We're still going to get into our normal. I say like quotations, what is normal? (laughs) But you know, like it is common. It is expected to have imposter syndrome. Well, this has certainly gone a different way than I thought it would. (laughs) Like, well, we meant to talk about reincarnation, but here we are. But this is what needed to come out. This this is how this works. And this is what I like about the style of this podcast is we're like, this is what we think we're going to talk about. But we don't. It's kind of like what we said about spirit. It's like, well, you might have these questions and we might be able to answer them. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's like whatever wants to come out is going to come out. But I guess we can like maybe end a little bit with reincarnation or like how we feel about it. Yeah. I, I think we were talking briefly, uh, off air, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, about, uh, reincarnation. I, for me, and it's, it's interesting. I have, I've always believed that like, there's, there's more to this life. Yeah. Um, I, I actually had a healing or a Reiki session when I was in my early twenties by, um, a friend of my mom's. Um, and I saw all these different things, different colors. It was almost like spirit was, um, fast forwarding through all my lives. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I saw really early, almost cave men yep. lifetimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just snowballed over, which is where I saw, um, previous life that I had crashed into a pole, which is interesting because you had brought that up like word for word in my past life reading that you did for me. So go and get a past life reading for me. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, they can be very insightful. Yeah. Yes. Cause it's, it's about, it's less about here's what life you live. Um, and more about like, here's what patterns might emerge yeah. for you. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And here's a different lens. So we're talking, to, it sounds like this podcast is all about perspectives, right? Mm-hmm. And that actually, oh, thank you, Spirit, is re- like what reincarnation is about, what going through all these lives is about, is about giving us different, different perspectives. perspectives that leads and to- through that, we learn. Yeah. So I was saying to Aaron in this book that I was reading, um, so he, it's like um, a transcript of sessions um, that this hypnotist did with people um, and what they said in it. And, um, you know, there was this one thing where somebody came through this very like high level spiritual um, past life. Um, And what came through was like, not to discount reincarnation, but to think of it maybe from a different lens or a different perspective. And, and what had come through was like, that it's like, has anybody ever seen the, um, there's like a video on YouTube called the egg theory. If you haven't watched it, it's about seven, eight minutes long. I would highly recommend you go listen to it because it's probably going to make you go, what right and also because we're referring to it so if you want to know what we're talking about um it's called the egg theory so it's this like quick video walks through this 
basically like what the purpose of life is and where we come through and all come from and all these things. But it's this idea, what he was saying was that there's really no time and space. So it might not be necessarily that we're like past lives are past in the sense that they've happened before, but that maybe they're all happening simultaneously. Maybe when I tap into somebody's inner child and I bring up a certain thing that happened to them in their younger years that really affected them and is still affecting them now, oftentimes people will go, yeah, that happened to me. Oh, my God, I never put it together. But that is the thing that's been plaguing me my whole life. Like, I didn't put it together, but that's where that started. Um, But like, what if that younger child was actually like existing at the same time as you are right now. And this also reminds me of once I did an intuitive guidance reading, and I think it's only happened like one time um, where I actually connected to the person's, not their higher self, but like their very elderly self. Yeah. Because it's very often that they'll come in like your inner child. Um, oh my God, that's so, sorry. Yeah. Is it another synchronicity? Yeah. It's like somebody's elderly like self, like in her 90s on her deathbed. And the things that she wanted to share with her younger self so that, you know, life would go a certain way for her older self, you know, like she was encouraging it. And I was like, Oh my goodness, like this is so amazing. But it, and Aaron and I were talking a bit before, like off air, like, so is it possible that the things we're doing right now, we know that it can affect our future self. Like we mm-hmm. know what we do now will affect that. But if we think about this in terms of like everything's happening simultane- simultaneously, then could the work yeah. that we're doing right now be healing that inner child like in real time? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I yeah. don't know. It just blows my mind, honestly, when I think about it. <laughs> it's like next level. Like, oh, wow. It's crazy. I, and the reason why I went, oh, my God, oh, my God, is because when I first started doing readings, for some reason, not for some reason, this was spirit. Yeah. For sure. But I would go into meditation and always envision my higher self as this older, wiser woman is this the is her name start with an r or is that somebody else oh is that your guide rachel my guide okay rachel my guide (laughs) i just i just thought about rachel this morning which is really weird and i don't know why but i did Rachel. yeah she's uh she's one of my so she's one of my guardian angels i think i believe you feel she is yeah and um it's because i had so i had another reading a few years ago with maureen yeah. And um, I had said, um, I had wanted to ask about somebody, but I didn't say it at the, at the beginning of the reading. Um, and I had, I wanted to, at that time, I really wanted to connect to my angels more. Yes. So I had my angel stone out, which was the angel light. Yeah. Um, handle dedicated to like can- connecting to angels during the reading. And Maureen said, I have, I have a guide or like, <coughs> oh, excuse me, it's like really big angelic, almost presence. Or I have a, some a guide for you that, but they're not going to tell me their name until the end of the reading, and then we'll find out why. Okay. So the, she goes through the whole reading. She goes, "Do you have any questions?" And I said, "Well, I've wanted to <laughs> ask about this name that's come up before that I think is possibly maybe connected uh, a guide in some way." Yeah. Rachel, and she goes, "Wow, do you see what happened?" Yeah. This guy came in the beginning. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Because that was Rachel. <laughs> That's Rachel. Mm-hmm. That's Rachel. She's like, and she won't, wouldn't come up to the end. And she came out. She said, wanted I totally you to forgot about that. It's it's almost too like she wanted you to. It's like a test of your intuition to be like, okay, like speak it. You know it. Speak it. Who yeah, am I? Say it. it. It'll be validated. That's it. That reminds Say me it. too of a reading I did for somebody probably about a year ago. Um it was like a combination reading. So it was intuitive guidance and mediumship. And when I was with her for intuitive guidance, um, I was connecting to um, like her guide. So it doesn't always happen that I connect with guides. Sometimes I'll purposely ask for them. But for the most part, it's just like they pop in randomly. And I never know if they're going to or not. So he popped in randomly. And I his name was, um, I feel like it was Daniel. Um, To confirm, I'd have to go back, but that's what's coming to my mind right now, so I'm going to trust it. Um, And he described himself, and he had red hair, 
you know, like quite pale. Um, and anyways, this is how he described himself. And he was bringing forth, um, you know, guidance for her. And she started to like cry. And I was like, oh, it's so nice that this has touched her this way. And she said, I have to tell you why this is impacting me so much. She had been like through a really rough time in her younger life. And she had this friend of hers who had the same name as the name I brought through, redheaded guy. And he tried to help her at this time, tried to help her better her life and do these things. And she said, I always called him like he was my angel, like as if he was placed in front of me to save me. And she's like, so the very, it's almost like that was like a physical manifestation of her actual guide. Yeah. Which wow. is just mind blowing too. Like, I mean, the description was the same, the same name, everything. It was just like, so arm hairs are standing up. And I, I, no, I'm, I, yeah. I've got goosebumps. It's, I've got goosebumps. Cr it's crazy when stuff like that happens. Um, yeah. Wow. I just, I, I, I love this conversation. I feel like reincarnation is one that we've touched a little bit on, but maybe we could even talk about it next week. Yeah. I, like, well, I was going to say, maybe we can talk, we'll talk about guides or. Yeah. Yes, I feel like reincarnation because it's come up a few times from a few of you that you would like to hear more about reincarnation and near death experiences. Um, so um, perhaps we can discuss that further next week. Yes. Do you want to pull a card with us to end off the day? Yeah, I okay. Cards here. I thought I'd do Oracle cards. Okay. And they're the Ask Your Guide Oracle. Ask Your Guides which, um, by Sonia. Chocat, I think it is. Okay. You know what's amazing, Erin, is we're ending with guides and we didn't plan to. And you, at the beginning of our session, because we talked about which deck we were choosing, right? Uh, and she's like this. She held up the deck she's using. And then we ended up talking about guides. Oh, Synchronicities. Oh oh yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, guys. Okay, Rachel, come on. Yeah, come on out. It's funny, too, because I literally said to somebody recently, I really want to spend more time intentionally connecting to my guides. Like, I want to connect to them more fully so that, because I, I know they're there, but I want to, like, hear their names and I want to, like, see what they look like and all of those things. So that's something that I haven't really set my intention to do before. What came out? <laughs> flip. You guys are going to flip freak. Can I swear on this? Well, I already said shit. So, yeah, I think so. Flip your shit. Okay. Okay, so two cards <laughs> just flew out. And yeah, the, so you had to pick it up. I was like, oh my God. I'll, I'll get to, okay, <laughs> I don't know which one to start with. I'm going to start with the one that blew my mind Physical Body Gaia. Earth, connect to your body, which is like what we've been talking about. Connect to your body, be connect present. Body. Physical yes. body, Earth energy, Gaia energy. Gaia is the, the Earth, right? Yeah. Gaia is Earth, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I so like, that's coming from our guides as well. That. Our guides are telling us this as well as we are like, well, we were connecting with our guides. There you go. Like we were connecting to that energy when we were channeling the messages about getting back in your body last week, week before. Yeah. yeah. Fruits. I feel like I want to say make sure we're eating more fruits and veggies. Yes, okay. because isn't there like um, the more like light a food is yeah the more the vibration isn't it something to do with vibration and like if something's really so. dense it, yeah it like lower you feel it. good you read good or something like that there's something like yeah and that's another reason why i tend to drink a lot of water or liquids um yeah. well i am doing a reading and before because the more like kind of water you have in you the more um can the energy can have no. a have a yeah it has a root <laughs> it has a flow it yeah has root the other card that came out was master teacher mm, right guide, learning yeah. discipline and the cool thing is like there's these geometric shapes <gasps> in the oh my and colors and colors i mean blue I mean, healing like you just can't even make it up 33 manifestation Synchronicities, the whole shebang, the colorful. Why live in black and white when you can live in techno color? Like, guys. And it's blue. So this card's blue. Amy's picture is blue. It's blue. And, and this is what it comes down to. 
if we all have the ability to connect, because we all come in here, I, I feel like we all come here ultimately with the ability to raise our awareness. This is another thing I was reading in this book is about how like we almost like we talked about this before, how there's like uh think about like uh the levels of the spirit world, like an elevator, right? Yeah. And how um because in, in it somebody had come to greet somebody like when she was in spirit, like when she had left her body gone to spirit, um, the first person she saw was her uncle and he was there to guide her and to greet her, but then he had to go. He led her to a new group and she's like, where is he going? But then what came out, out about it was like, he's on a different elevator level. So his consciousness level is different. So yeah, I feel, yeah. but also that we have the ability to like, especially in this book. So what was channeled from this one, person in spirit was that in every life we live we we could essentially raise our consciousness like one to two hundred like lifetimes worth of elevation evolution in one lifetime if we did right so it's like why don't we try like if we could do that if you could go from like floor three to the penthouse suite in your lifetime like let's try <laughs> let's yeah. try at least to get up there in the sky yeah I just um I think that's so amazing it's all about consciousness levels so I feel like that's why some people and our and also our consciousness levels um cut like our like whatever we did in the past in our past mm -hmm. lives kind of set us up for our consciousness levels here. And I feel like that's how you can explain how some people kind of just are mediums from very early age. Like you and I just kind of came into it naturally. It's likely because it's something that we've been doing for a very long time. But if we can help other people raise their awareness, therefore raise their consciousness, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we'll all be on the same floor together soon. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, and that's why I feel like things like this can be learned. I, think, I feel oh. like some people have a natural inclination, just yeah. like playing the piano. Some people are great at it. It doesn't yeah. mean that you and I can't like, we can hit the keys. We might not be playing a great song, but we can do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if we did it every day, we'd probably be great at it. But there's still going to be people that just kind of come out of the womb and they're like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, like, it's just the way it is. Oh. Um, yeah. And like something that comes up in past life reading, since we're talking about past life, I always tell people um, things of like things about common patterns, like I'll say your common thread, because it's not yeah. always your most recent past life. Like I'll, I'll say like whatever one has the most significance or the thread is like the shortest, you know, like carrying through to this one, like what is in that life that can help you in this life. Um so things like that come up about patterns that you need to encourage to work upon, things that we're fearful of. So often people, I, uh, some, I channeled something about somebody um, um, with a bridge and driving and being fearful. And they're like, I'm terrified of bridges. I don't drive in the snow. Like I'm terrified of going over the bridge. And like for me, I've always been afraid of heights, like create like more than the average person like you know i climb a ladder and my legs are literally sh vibrating like it's an actual deep deep fear and when yeah. i had a past life reading what came through was me losing my footing and falling over the side of a, a big cliff um and that's why that fear in me is so strong because i've actually experienced before so if, if sometimes our fears are not just you know um something we're making up it's something we actually have lived through but also the things that we've been doing for multiple lifetimes we're going to be naturally good at yes so allow yourself like celebrate i often tell people you're great at a b and c great do more of that celebrate it like because some people are like oh you know but i don't want to be like showing off i'm like show off like you've earned it didn't that come through with no i think it was with emily Sorry, I hope she's okay with me mentioning it. I, well, I'm not t saying who Emily is, so I don't think anybody's going to know. But something that came through in a past life reading for a friend of ours was that she's always been kind of this witchy, magical woman. And mm -hmm. that they were like, there's these two spe uh, specific past lives. One was male, one was female, both doing that kind of stuff. They were yeah. like, please show off. Like, show off how good you are. <laughs> 
do you know, it. do more of do it. Do more of it. There's a reason that you're naturally inclined to it. There's a reason that you're good at it. There's a reason why people are coming to you for it. You've yeah. been doing it for a long time. Like celebrate yourself and allow oh, yourself right. to be good at it. Also, Amy, I this is the second time this has happened. I have seen orbs in your camera. Orbs? Yes. I'll have to watch it back. They're flying around me. Back. It's like 12. Right now it's 1240, 41. I think I saw it. To, yeah, 1241. Watch gonna, it back. I don't know if I'm it's I'm going to watch that. it back. Next time, um, next time we come on, so next week, I'm going to bring my cell phone. And for those of you that are on YouTube, I'm going to show you a picture because I want you to see a picture of a crazy orby kind of situation because i know that orbs come up a lot for people and they're like what are these like is it just the glare off my camera and like maybe sometimes it is but yeah again it's one it of those things sometimes it's one it's of those things that. the spirit sign how does it feel what what do you think of the minute you see it mm-hmm. but yeah this is just like a wild kind of orby it's situation. Kind of flew by. like this is the second time it's happened i'm like is there a vent under above you like a no the closest vent is over oh, like that way so no there's not one above me not dust. it's not dust no it doesn't maybe you know what's funny i'll have to go back and look because yeah. ha- has both of them happened in the last like little bit is when we were talking about emily okay i wondered so what i was connecting in my mind was i had said a, a few minutes ago i want to set my intent so that i connect more to my guide and so that I know them and know that they're there and know their names and know what they look like so I wondered that's what came to mind when you said that because I'm like oh maybe it's my guide literally going hey like we're here I I swear to okay we're gonna wrap up soon because we just have been talking a lot so I'm so sorry but I swear to god I hear one of my guides like physically hear him not every time not it's not like I'm you know hearing him say make sure you're you know i don't know yeah it's not like a conversation i always hear hey i that's happened twice once when i was in when i was like super i think i was messaging you because i was like having all of these really cool experiences and i was like i have to tell amy and Mm -hmm. um and i heard and that's when i heard um hey like in the in in the bathroom and then just the other day um i I was feeling anxious or nervous about something mm-hmm. and I heard, Hey, and like, it, hey, I was okay. like, am I here? You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a reminder that goosebumps. I've goosebumps. So many goosebumps during these. <laughs> oh. Also, if you haven't noticed, Amy and I have recorded twice today, which is why we're wearing the same shirt. If you're yeah, watching. We're, we're batch, we're batch, um, recording simply because we're going to take the holidays off. Um, yeah. yeah so we're batch recording. <laughs> today and next week so we can have christmas and new year's off but um yeah so we'll leave it at that yeah this was awesome this so, so awesome i <gasps> hope everybody's having a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend and we're really approaching the holidays so merry christmas happy holidays whatever it is that you celebrate if you don't celebrate that's okay too celebrate yourself be present be grounded Christmas, happy Eat some Hanukkah, good food. Happy Kwanzaa. Yes, all all the things. Happy Hanukkah. Yes. Mwah. Love you guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to give us a five star review on Apple Podcast and tune in each week as we dish on all things spiritual.